Nintendo's Golden Child isn't especially good in a competitive sense, but they did give it some major help with its own signature held item. The Light Ball doubles Pikachu's attack and special attack stats, which allows it to actually have some firepower. It also gets coverage with Surf for ground types, and while it's definitely not amazing, Pikachu can do some work. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Hey, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps out and it only takes you a second. It's a win-win situation. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and toss out the toaster Rotom, and I decide to lead off with the floppiest boy in town. And as it turns out, we're not actually feeling the Pop-Tart. So essentially my plan is to go for a nice little U-turn here with the Min Xiao. Being Trace Scarf, I can even outspeed Scarf Rotom, so that is fine with me. I go for that U-turn, this allows me to pivot into something that can better handle uh, the, the Rotom Heat. A lot of the time you see these things, they're going to be running stuff like Trick, uh, it could be defensive with Will-O-Wisp. Overall, I'm just going to go right into Pikachu. Picasso comes out here, ready to do some painting, and they actually end up going for that Volt Switch, which is amazing. Activates the Lightning Rod, gives me a nice little special attack boost. And uh, Pikachu is out here actually surviving a switch in. So here's the thing, with that special attack boost, a Surf actually kills the Rotom, but they're gonna end up switching out into their best check to this thing, which is gonna be the Clod Sire. So I'd say like 90% of the time you see a Clod Sire, it's not actually gonna be running its water absorb ability, which is why I feel comfortable going for that Surf. Uh, it does a nice little chunk here, and yeah, that tells me it is gonna be an unaware Clod Sire. So, Sadly, we don't actually get the benefit from the plus one special attack here because of its ability. It ignores the stat changes essentially, but my plan is just to go for another Surf. Now, I know that this thing is probably just gonna go for a Stealth Rock, likely expect me to switch out, but what that does is it, put it puts it actually in range for one more Surf uh, to have a pretty good chance to take care of it. So, Pikachu is essentially staring in the face of death. If you're a little Pikachu, a massive clod of Earth is not the guy you wanna fight against, but I go for one more Surf here, and that does actually take care of it. We show him our sick-ass moves, and we're able to three-hit kill a Claude Sire. So that takes care of a huge wall on their team, and Pikachu got himself a kill. So honestly, I'm feeling pretty happy about that. So they see my mouse. They're like, hey, I got a family of mice. We're going to bring that out, and I can't really do much here. Uh, of course, uh, Mouse Hold is going to be faster than Pikachu, and a Population Bomb will kill me in, like, just hucking two babies at me. So what I decide to do is go into the Mudsdale. Now, while he is going to be able to do a bunch of damage with Population Bomb, listen, it's the most broken move ever. It, can, it does so much to anything, and uh, I go into Mudsdale essentially because with every hit, it's actually going to activate my stamina ability. So, you've probably never seen a Mudsdale <laughs> with so much stamina. It's actually kind of hilarious. This is kind of the only situation where uh, I can actually get to plus six defense by getting hit with one move. So with every hit, I am gonna take it better and better. Unfortunately though, a lot of the time these things will hit you 10 times and <laughs> get through my stamina boost here to grab a random critical hit. And after 10 hits, Mudsdale is like, what the fuck just happened to me? Just threw a family of mice at my horse and this thing comes in essentially confused. Imagine if that was you, you hard switch into a population bomb. You're like, bro, that was rude. Anyway, they go for one more population bomb here. And as you're gonna see, they actually get like a really rare chance to only hit four times. So I'm not sure what that's all about, but we take those because now that allows us to live and then we can go for our Stealth Rock here. I want to prioritize getting the Stealth Rock up, punish switches, uh, and help out the sweepers in the back. So I get those rocks up and at this point we essentially are going to die to a population bomb and my best answer to the mouse hold at this point is going to be my Scarf Mian Xiao. So Mudweiser sadly has taken too much damage at this point and I just decided to go for the body press. So they actually end up going for the tidy up instead, going to get rid of that Stealth Rock at the cost of now dealing with a plus six body press, uh, which will essentially kill anything on the damn field at this point. They do get that attack and speed boost, but you're gonna have to enjoy that boost in hell, my little mice friend, because that is gonna take care of it. Down goes the mouse hold, and that's a uh, pretty big threat out of the way, honestly, and uh, Mudsdale doing its thing. So on the empty switch, they're gonna decide to bring in my arch nemesis. There's not, there's not many Pokemon I despise playing against, but I'll tell you what, Garganackle might be one of them, and while it does look like it's a big old salt lick for my horsey over here, uh, I don't have the best matchup because this basically means that they are going to go ahead and commit the Terra. Expecting them to go for that, I can't really body press, uh, considering it's pretty likely they go into the ghost type to resist that body press. Uh, I just decided to set up my stealth rock here. So they are actually going to commit the Terra, and it does end up being the ghost type. So luckily I don't body press right through them and we are going to ensure that our rocks will essentially stay up for the rest of the match here. So that's all I really care about at this point because I do have some answers to the Garg, uh, but regardless, this thing is just one of those guys that you hate to see. So the good news is they do actually commit the Terra, of course, so I don't have to worry about anything else. 
change into random types later on and they're just gonna go for that salt cure. So I feel like if you're a horse Pokemon, salt cure shouldn't work. We just be licking up that salt, having a good time. But uh, after leftovers and then salt cure is able to do some damage, I am still at plus six defense. So I can take an attack from this thing, no problem. Uh, the deal is I just can't really hit it that hard in return. But my plan is to leave Mudsdale in here, do as much chip to this thing as possible. Uh, and then once I die to either them going for an attack or that salt cure, I can bring in a better answer and hopefully have it chipped to a range where I can take care of it. But then we see it goes for the iron defense and that just makes this thing even more annoying because now uh, its physical defense is honestly insane. And Salt Cure not quite going to be able to take me out. It looks like there's even one more turn here. So at this point, I have nothing really to lose by just leaving Mudsdale in here, getting some damage, trying to chip it. it Mudsdale is not going to be of much value to me uh, at this amount of health and it's just slow. So. I really just need this thing taken care of so I can get a nice little uh, revenge switch in. However, they go for that Salt Cure, it basically heals me because my defense is absolutely nuts. And we take another Salt Cure recoil where it looks like next turn we will go down. So I go for another Earthquake here, try to roll that crit chance through the Iron Defense. However, uh, it does not happen and they get another Iron Defense up. So this thing is now sitting at plus four physical defense with a crazy ass ghost on his head looking like a Minecraft dummy. And actually, after leftovers, I think I do, in fact, even take one more turn of the Salt Cure. So I've gotten myself in a shit situation here against the, the Pokemon that I hate playing against, and I have no reason to just switch here. So I go for another EQ, uh, and thinking at least if I can get it below half, even a recover, it's going to still have some chip, but it does go for that recover, annoyingly. I could have actually probably would have been a smarter play to just predict that and then go for a switch, but again, it doesn't really matter. Mudsdale would have been a Death Fodder switch in, potentially. Uh, but finally, the Salt Cure is going to take care of the Mudsdale, and we can figure out what we want to do against this thing. So, of course, it has more goddamn physical defense than the Earth at this point, and I cannot hit it on the physical side. So, my initial plan was to go into Pikachu and try to finish it off with a Thunderbolt, but it has just a bit too much health at this point to be able to get knocked out from that. So, my plan is instead to go into the Hisuian Braviary. Now, I know I take a lot of damage from the initial Salt Cure, but... What I can do with this thing is potentially get an Esper Wing, see how much damage we're working with, and then potentially start to set up some Calm Minds. And with the access to the recovery in the form of Roost, I can probably win uh, this battle in the long run, as long as it didn't have rock coverage, which it goes for that Salt here, um, and it, does, it knocks me down to near half after the, the continual damage, which is honestly fine. So at this point, I go for another Esper Wing here, but they're actually going to end up just switching out. I, I really was just trying to get this thing in range to where Pikachu can knock it out, but they make a smart move and go into the King Gambit. But I did actually get that Garganacle to around half to where Pikachu actually does finish it with the Thunderbolt. So, of course, the Esper Wing does not affect the dark type that is King Gambit, and this thing is a real pain. Listen, anytime you're working with a Suyan Braviary, uh, it is unfortunate being weak to both knockoff and Sucker Punch. So we find ourselves in a bit of a pickle against the King Gambit. And when you're sitting in this situation, it's almost guaranteed that they're going to try to set up some uh, Swords Dance or something like that. So I predict the Swords Dance. I'm actually just going to go right into Mian Shao. And if they do Swords Dance, I can then close combat in a return. They've used their Terra already, so I don't have to worry about it changing types. And after a plus two, it's pretty much a roll or at least... Uh, a pretty a good chance that I take a Sucker Punch here. So they do go for that Swords Dance. I come in here safely, and I go for that Close Combat here. Sucker Punch knocks me down to 12, which is insane. And luckily, that allows us to beat the Devil out of them, and a Close Combat does knock it out. So that's honestly a huge threat out of the way, and luckily, uh, the switch into the Swords Dance did allow me to have enough health to barely live a Sucker Punch. So uh, they're going to go back into the Garg. Now this thing is, again, just being a McAsshole because I can't Close Combat it. They know that I'm Scarf. And it's obviously Ghost. So I decided to just go right back into Braviary. Uh, essentially as a sack play here. Uh, this thing doesn't seem to have a whole lot of value for the remainder of the match here. So I go into the Braviary. Um, looking badass at least. As they actually just end up going for a recover. I was really you know, hoping they would potentially just finish off the little threat that's in front of them. But you know, they recover again. And god damn it. This thing just never dies. So I go for another Esper Wing here. That is going to knock it you know, below half, and it's actually just gonna go for another recover. This dude seriously wants to see the world burn. I I cannot fathom that you're just sitting, okay, they did the recover again, and I'm just gonna ask for win. All I need to do is get this thing <laughs> to the point where Pikachu can knock it out, um, because I do wanna hit it on the special side. So finally, they do just go for another Salt Cure here that is going to not quite knock me out, but the residual is gonna finish off the Braviary, which is honestly exactly the situation I needed to be in here. I've got this thing weakened, 
Braviary does go down, now I get myself a free switch. And it is finally time for the absolute GOAT once again to prove that, hey, I do have some competitive viability. We bring in Lightball Pikachu, and they do not have a lot of switch ins. Of course, they've taken care of the Claude Sire. And as much as I would absolutely love to go for a Trailblaze here, I instead am going to go for that Terra Electric Thunderbolt just to guarantee that this knocks this thing out. The Garg is not going to annoy us any longer, and uh, Pikachu is going to go ahead and put the light bulb on his head, looking goofy as hell, but uh, that's gonna be, it's going to be able to finish it off. So Pikachu grabs his second kill of the game, and the reason why I would want to go for that Trailblaze is if I'm able to get up a Trailblaze and they don't actually have Earthquake for coverage, uh, I'm the fastest Mon on either side and I can do huge damage with both Surf and Thunderbolt to what they have left. But I figure it's more in my best interest to just go for that uh, Thunderbolt finish off the defensive monster and now they get the free switch back into the Rotom. So I'm just going to go for the Surf. Uh, the only thing that actually knocks me out here is Overheat and they are going to go for it. So that definitely Oko's me. Listen, you breathe on Pikachu, it's it's going to die. So that does like 500% to me. And sadly, Pikachu does go down, but not before we made a difference in the match. And that's all that counts, baby. Pikachu is uh, not great, but fun to use. So uh, now this thing's sitting at pl minus two special attacks. I'm thinking, hold on. I have a win condition in the form of Venomoth. I actually have a few, but I would like Venomoth to try to make it happen here. So the plan is I go for a Quiver Dance, live a minus two overheat. It does like 85%. But it actually just ends up knocking me out. Even at minus two, uh, I do die to that overheat. I believe I even calced it, so this thing must actually be running Modest Nature over Timid, which actually means that it's definitely Choice Scarf, because we haven't been able to reveal this thing's item at this point yet. Uh, so the only way that knocks me out is Modest, and, you know, it is. So I tried the Venomoth, it didn't end up working, and now I can go into the Snorlax. Knowing that this thing is locked into that overheat, I can essentially come in with my thick fat. We barely even feel that shit. And I can go for essentially a free curse. So now its special attack is astronomically low. And uh, obviously it cannot really stay in here. And they only have the two Pokemon left. Their final Pokemon is going to be the Chien Pao. Which I've been worried about this entire match. But the Snorlax with the curse boost is actually a great answer to this thing. Especially with Thick Fat reducing the damage from Ice and Fire moves. So I just decided to go for the Body Slime here. They bring in the old... The old noodle, and uh, guess what? You get laid on by the Snorlax, that is not going to be fun. And that actually just ends up knocking this thing out at plus one. And now their final Pokemon is going to be uh, that Rotom Heat. So this thing, luckily for us, is not going to have the resources to knock out the Snorlax here, even in like two hits. So all I have to do is go for the Body Slam. However, they're actually going to check. The, watch this move. Hold on. They go for the trick. They're going to straight up steal food from my Snorlax. Gives me a Choice Scarf, takes my Citrus Berry, and rudely enough, eats it right in front of me. Can you imagine? This Snorlax is probably so pissed off right now. You, you steal my berry and then eat it right in front of me. Guess what? You get body slammed and that's a broken ass toaster. So that is going to do it for the match. And this team is super fun to use. At least we got Pikachu to grab, you know, a third of the kills here. And, uh, you know, it did what I could. So thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. And I do appreciate all the support. Listen, I know this is a longer one. If you made it to the end, go ahead and comment Pika. And I will uh, leave you a like or something. See ya.